My turn. Okay. Um, uh, lighthouse. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, light dressing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, this little light up mine. Oh, I'm okay. gonna let it shine. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, oh, faster than the speed of light. Oh, that's great. Um, uh, deer in headlights. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, light as a feather. Oh yeah, have you ever actually seen a deer in headlights? It's true, they, they like freeze right where they stand. It's crazy. Mm. Oh, good, oh, fixed it. Ooh. <laughs> All right, yeah, I was driving home the other day and uh, I, I was in this really woodsy area and I, I came across this corner and there was this deer standing right in the middle of the road. So I stopped and the deer stopped too. And, and for a few seconds we were just, we were just frozen. We were looking at each other, right? Yeah, I, I, it was like the lights from my car had scared him stiff. Yeah. So then he shook it off and moved off down the road, and I kept driving. Yeah, I, I read later that the, that the deer is used to the dark, so when they see bright lights so suddenly, they literally don't know what to do for a few seconds. Such simple creatures. You know? John? Wow.
Hello everyone, welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this is going to be the best day. Not only do we have a great show planned. We got a giraffe tamer on the show with a real live baby giraffe. Oh! oh. And we've got an amazing Bible story with Kellen. <gasps> oh! Sorry. And if that weren't enough, John and I have big plans after the show to do things we've been looking forward to for a long time. Yes, I'm going to be a finalist in this year's Adult League Math League competition. Woo! Oh, yes, yes, a math competition. Not at all boring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my math lead partner, Bobbert, and I have been trying to win for years, but this is the first time we've ever made it to the finals. I am so pumped! And I am pumped for you. Thank you. But I'm even more excited for <clears throat> the Outdoor Shakespeare Festival! This will be the first one in four years because the last three were canceled due to weather. But the skies are clear and the sun is bright today, so I'm ready to get all Elizabethan. <laughs> yeah, but before we go fulfill our lifelong dreams, lifelong dreams, we've got a show to do. Who's ready to meet a baby giraffe? Ooh, me, oh, oh me. you are, you are, oh, okay. Then please welcome someone who knows. Phone call, John, you got a phone call, phone call. John, you got a phone call, phone call, John, phone call, phone call, phone call, John, you got a phone call, phone oh, call, right. John, you got a phone oh, call, Bobbert. phone call, John. Hey, Bobbert. Yeah, you've been working on your prime numbers? <laughs> Hold on. What? 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 Okay, bye. What? Huh? Uh, that was Bobbert, my math lead partner. He can't come to the math lead finals. He has a kidney stone. Oh no, are you okay? Is Bobbert okay? This too shall pass. Wow. I'm, I'm really sorry, John. I, I know how much you were looking forward to this. You can't do the competition by yourself, can you? No. Huh? Every team must have exactly two people. It's a rule. Too bad you're not good at math. Well, no, I'm good at math. I just think it's boring. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. What's four plus four? Uh, eight. Okay. Okay, you're in! You're my new math lead partner! Oh, oh no, no, I can't. I, I haven't trained. Plus, the Outdoor Shakespeare Festival! <laughs> Plus, math is boring, so no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you're, you're right. I, you know, I couldn't ask you to skip your Shakespeare thing. It's a lifelong dream, right? So I'll just... You know, Bobbert and me will just have to try to make the finals again next year. It, it'll be fine. <laughs> What's next? I'll do it. You'll do what? Your math thing. I'll be your partner. What? What? You don't have time. I'll make time. You're my friend and this is important to you. Shakespeare can wait another year. Really? Yes. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank but you. But I can't you. promise we'll win. I'm good at math, but I don't know if I'm competition no, good. No, 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 don't worry about that. I'll train you now. No. Come on. Oh, oh, wait, 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 we forgot about the baby giraffe. Oh. You know what, it's okay. Huh? They want to help you too. Let's... Learn some math! Yes! I think those are made yeah, for outdoors. Don't They're those. outdoor toys. Yeah.
This doesn't have anything to do with math. How many times did I hit you with a pool noodle? 47. How many feathers have flown by? 486. You're ready. Yes! Yeah! Yes! Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's Bible story time with Dad! What is up, fellas? Kellen! Hey, thanks for taking the time to hear a story from me today. I know you're both very busy. Oh, we wouldn't miss it, Kellen. Hey, say, are you good at math? Is the sum of the square root of any two sides of an isosceles triangle equal to the square root of the third side? Yes. I'm okay. But you don't need to be good at math to understand today's Bible story. It was written down in the book of Mark, and it's... It's about to have some musical assistance. Oh, you bet your custom-made designer sneakers, my friend. Glad you came. Glad to hear. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow-by-blow -blow of the Bible story. On the Melv Solomon story recap. Thank you, thank you for that uproarious and nearly inaudible applause. I am Melv Solomon and standing close by me with piano tinkling fingers at the ready is my loyal and not the least bit awkward brother-in-law, Greg. Say hey to the people, Greg. Hey everybody, it's a pleasure to be here today. Whoa, Greg, we're just saying hey, we're not recording a podcast. Hey. There it is. Hey Melv and Greg, thanks for being here. It's always memorable. Exactly right, Kellen. That's what we're here for. You do what you do, and we'll provide some tunes to keep that story nestled in your viewers' noggins. Sounds great. Here goes. Jesus and his disciples traveled all over the place, teaching people, healing people, and performing miracles. Everywhere Jesus went, people wanted to hear what he would say and see what he would do. We're talking huge crowds of people here. Imagine trying to walk down a street full of people all struggling to get closer to you. That's what it was like for Jesus. He was that well known. Oh ho! Craig and I know a little something about the fame game. The selfie seekers, the autograph hounds. I got a song about it. Hit it, Greg. Gre oh, Greg. He hasn't been getting a lot of sleep lately since his dog gave birth to septuplets. Poor guy. Mm. Greg! Who oh, let the dogs out? You did, Greg. No! Let's corral those puppies. Huh? Play the song about fame. Oh. You still got it, Greg. Do you know me? I'm the guy who sings the songs. That's right. I'm he. I'm that guy, but don't get me wrong. I'm just like you or any other dude. Now excuse me, you're blocking my limo. What happened next, Kellen? Right. So, Jesus was really popular with people, most everywhere he went. That's what it was like when Jesus and his disciples were in the city of Jericho. They were actually trying to make their way through a huge crowd and out of the city when they heard a man shouting from the side of the road. The man said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Some people who heard the man shouting told him to be quiet they probably thought Jesus didn't have time for his problems. But the man shouted even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me! Boy, do we know what that's like. We've had our share of hecklers. No, I don't think he was People a- People love the sound of their own voice and, and like to disrupt the proceedings. I gotta be honest, it's kinda hurtful. Why does nobody care about anybody else's feelings anymore? Believe it or not, I wrote a song about it. Hit it, Greg, and a one, and a two, and a Greg. Greg. Greg! 101! No, it's uh. still just the two of us, Gregory. Uh. Play the song about the heckler. Nailed it. Y stands for you, cause you hurt me. O stands for oh, how much it hurts. U stands for you, cause you're still the one who hurt me. Oh, why can't you stop being so antagonistic? What happened to the heckler, Kellen? Did Jesus tell him what's what? Um, 
Yeah, the man shouting wasn't a heckler. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He actually wanted Jesus' help. His name was Bartimaeus, and he was blind. Now, in that time, they didn't have any sort of resources or technologies like we do today to help people with disabilities. So, if you were blind, you didn't have a lot of options. Bartimaeus had no choice but to beg for money and food every day. But when he heard Jesus passing by, he couldn't contain himself. He had to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Maybe, just maybe, this healer, this miracle worker would have compassion to take time to help a poor beggar who couldn't see. Did you say compassion? Now we're singing the same language. Hit it, Greg. Greg. Greg! The cat's in the cradle. <laughs> no. Now you've got kittens. Oh, yikes. Play the song I'm thinking of, Greg. Okay. Are you serious? You played that song? Any song but that song, Greg. That's the rule. That's my number one. No, that is my only rule. You remember how early I told you that you've still got it? Yeah. I was wrong. Oh. You don't got it. Okay. You lost it. Uh, it's gone. I... Forever. Forever. Where does the story go uh, from there, Kevin? Somewhere amazing. I think you really need to hear it right now as well. When Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling to him, he didn't keep on walking. No, he stopped right where he was. He stopped making his way out of the city. He told the people to call Bartimaeus over. Before, the people had been telling the man to be quiet, but now their tune had changed. They told him to cheer up because Jesus was calling him. So Bartimaeus leapt to his feet, came over to Jesus, and Jesus asked Bartimaeus what he wanted. And he said, Rabbi, I want to be able to see. And Jesus responded, go, your faith has healed you. Right away, Bartimaeus could see. Whoa. Also, whoa. Even though he had places to go and was surrounded by people to see, Jesus stopped. And he had compassion on one person who was calling for help. Jesus cared enough about Bartimaeus to do something to help him. You know, Kellen, your story's got me pondering my own predicament. It's possible, not definite, but a pint-sized possibility that I might need to throw a little compassion in the direction of my brother-in-law, Greg. 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 Hey, Greg. 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 Can you look at my face, Greg? Greg, point your peepers at me, pal. I'm sorry for yelling at you, Greg. I was way out of line. And I'm sorry for dragging you to work when I knew you were dog tired. You forgive me? Sure. Atta boy, Greg. How about one last song to help tie Kellen's story into a bow? I love it. You do still got it. You've got lots of things to do, places you need to be. You don't think you have time to help the people that you see. But the people are important. God made them and God made you. So just stop and have compassion. It's the best thing you could do. That's good stuff. Hey, say, Greg. What's I, I come over later and, and help you take care of the pups so you can take a nap? Is that okay? Is yes! That okay? No. Oh. Okay, then. Let's make it happen, Greg. Greg? What did you think of this story, fellas? I love it when Jesus does miracles. He's amazing. I think it's amazing how Jesus takes time to help people who might be overlooked. I know, when we hear about Jesus, the Son of God, stopping to help people, it reminds us that we too have a responsibility to help others, especially if we're followers of Jesus. Oh, and by the way, great job helping out with the math league competition. 
Well, I hope I'm going to be helpful. Oh, it's gonna be great. Hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. Yep, I'll see you next time. Bye. <sighs> Seriously, I can't thank you enough for making time for me in this math competition. It's no problem whatsoever. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now. Oh yeah? Yeah, see, math's not so boring after all, huh? Uh, let's, <laughs> not, let's not get carried away. Okay. Uh, reveal the question. Oh, when has someone made time for you? Oh, oh, well, there was this one time when my friend, Brandon, gave up a chance to go read 400 year old plays. I know, I know. So he could help me out in my math competition. I remember that. It's today. <laughs> yeah, they got it. Hey, John makes time for me too. When I twisted my ankle on the trampoline, he helped me get inside and ice it up. He's a real friend. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, what about you? When has someone made time for you? Could be a friend, could be a teacher, maybe a parent's made time for you once or twice. Yeah, talk about it together and we'll see you next time on... Whoa! What? Hey, you know what? We gotta get going. It's the math league competition. It starts in 22.5 minutes. Oh, that's three-eighths of an hour. I know, let's go. Bye, Bye. everyone. Hello. Is this a so-and-so show? I'm from the Owensboro Zoo. I brought a little friend with me. <laughs> He's so cute. His name's Puddles. He likes to run around in the rain. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hello?